Welcome to SmokehouseStudios.net The in-studio broadcast feed is now live. Warning. This show is about the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you are easily offended by the truth, then you need to keep listening. His return is drawing near. Smokehousestudios.net The Front Porch Show A unique blend of current events and what they might mean. Humbly seen through the eyes of God's Word, the Bible, in an old school front porch discussion with occasional guests, your input, and a guiding hand through Christ. Broadcasting from atop the front porch, it's SmokehouseStudios.net's The Front Porch Show. Now, carefully blending more smoke goodness in each and every soundbite, your host, Smokehouse. Hey, hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, friends. Wherever you may be across the globe and across the United States, Oh, Smokehouse with you here, SmokehouseStudios.net. Front Porch Show out here on this November the 7th, 2020. Phew, boy, I tell you what, I've been hearing a lot of the uh, fellow Christians out there whining and crying and raising cane that this election uh, is being stolen from us right before our very eyes. (laughs) And I have to ask myself, have you been listening to our program? We have spent many, many long nights with y'all every week explaining to you the ancient Hindu gods and Hindu goddesses that uh, the world today worships. Uh, We've shown you their names and how their names are resurfacing, uh, i.e., for example, uh, Kamala Tamika. And... um, we, uh, Paul and I came on uh, before Halloween, or actually the week be- prior to Halloween, uh, explaining to you how this Halloween was going to be the Halloween amongst Halloweens, and they were going to be conjuring up, calling up every demonic power that they possibly can, while at the same time, over this entire year, our churches have been closed, gradually opening, still wearing their masks, in fear of what man is threatening with a disease, operating on that faith more than they are the faith of the Almighty. At the same time, we are still slaughtering innocent children in the womb. We're shedding innocent blood. And there's a, 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 a bunch of us that are, are not us. You, the listener, understand uh, what we're seeing, but... You know, there are those that are scratching their heads going, how in the world could they pull this off? They pulled it off over COVID. I don't know if you've been watching the news uh, here in the last couple of uh, hours, but uh, crowds upon crowds have gathered in major capital cities celebrating this win or I wouldn't say when, it hasn't been even called yet, the election, but the the news media has called for Biden to be the president, saying that he has 280-some-odd electoral votes when these states haven't even finished reporting yet. So, friends, in all sincerity, as we sit here tonight, November the 7th, Viewing these election results, the outcome tonight is no different than it was Tuesday night of the election. The only difference tonight is, is that the news media is already spouting off to their watchers, to the liberal left, that Biden is now the winner. They have won. They have defeated Trump. And this election is the furthest election from being over. How many of you remember the year 2000, back in those days, the Al Gore Bush fiasco that took place in Florida, 38 days it took for them to determine who the president was going to be. It had to go to courts. 
And this is going to be no different, folks. Yes, they want Biden and Kamala in the White House, but their main objective here. Now, if they can get Biden as president, then uh, that's kind of a bonus. But their main objective is to keep the pipe clogged so thick that it clogs up the pipe all the way up till January the 20th, where there would be no president yet announced. Nancy Pelosi can take the reins and they have taken their power. So we can sit here tonight and we can sob over the fact that even though these states have not credibly established a a final winner yet, many of these states are still 98, 99% counted. It's just the news media, folks. It's just the news media that is claiming Biden to be the winner. Now, let me explain to you how this works. In a nutshell, in layman's terms, what happens here is, of course, we all know this, but we have uh, listeners out here that that may not know this, but uh, basically a state counts their votes, and once all the votes are counted and they're happy with it, then they... they, uh, they finalize their vote, and they, they deem their state credible. We're done. Boom. There's our votes. Every state has to do this. Every state has to uh, credit all votes and say we are completely done. In our state, the election is over. All 50 states have to do this, and then it is determined by the electoral number of each state as to which one receives the most electoral votes until that happens there is no president who has won now in order for a state to finalize their election count all legality has to be completed all counts have to be completed if there is any questions on recount or any of that, that has to be completed before a state can finalize its election results. So, folks, until that happens, the state is not officially finished. And, yes, they can project all that they want. But, see, as we look around, the uh, liberal media is stating this as the gospel that Biden has won, and the liberals get what they want. So you ask yourself, how could this be? I mean, you know, I read a post on Facebook the other day where Biden, uh, they were talking, or I say the other day, it actually was this afternoon, where, hey, they said that uh, everybody getting out in the streets and celebrating this Biden win now, that uh, all 70 million people that voted for Biden showed up in three cars. <laughs> Because we saw the Biden rallies, how there was just eight or ten people that would show up at these rallies. He he stayed in his basement. He didn't campaign. Trump's rallies had thousands upon thousands, but yet, not only has, uh, from the liberal media, not only has Biden won, but Biden has won in a landslide and has gotten even more votes than Obama has gotten. So... Where do we find ourselves today? We find ourselves, and, and I'm going to cover a few of the election fraud uh, that's going on. I'm not going to spend the whole show on this. Oh, thank you, Ron. Brother Ron's listening. Certified. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Certified. Uh, the state has got to certify their, their votes for their state before it's official in that state. And so... We understand what's happening. We've been telling you all along what was going to happen with this mail invalid. The whole purpose of COVID, the whole purpose of COVID, since we have such a strong, deluded nation now that has rejected God, closed their churches, then we, we've turned our backs on God. I mean, there's the remnant that haven't. We've been crying out, you know, especially now we're crying out. But have we forgotten one important thing here, that not one single sparrow falls to the ground outside of the will of the Father? Not one sparrow falls to the ground unless God says it's okay. Now, 
Tonight, what we're going to go into, I know that there is this video that's gone viral with Steve Pachinik, who uh, came on with Owen Schroyer this week, stating that our government has now placed an invisible watermark upon each ballot that is official, so that when there is a recount, if it does not have the invisible watermark on it from the government, then that ballot will be thrown out and not counted in the recount. Instead of running an echo chamber and running with that, we've decided to do some research. And apparently that is not true. And we're going to explain to you why, because the federal government is not the, really the one who puts out the ballots. It's the individual states that are in charge of how they are going to work their election for their state. So when it comes to ballots being produced, uh, that's the state's decision. But we're going to cover something with you uh, that Trump did form in 2018 that is being used as the excuse as to why there are watermarks on these ballots. So I wanted to clarify that right now. Don't want to leave you with a false sense of security. And we're going to cover all of the dead that have risen from the grave from the 1800s and have voted in this election in many states. We're going to cover all of it. But first, what we're going to cover, tonight's title is The Greatest Contest of Faith. The greatest contest of faith. And that's important because when we read in Romans chapter 8, verse 31, if God be for us, then who can be against us? In the darkest of days in the Civil War, when for a time it appeared that the cause of the Union might be lost, there was a speaker that was addressing an assemblage. And as he spoke of the foreboding days that lay ahead, his words cast a deepening gloom over the audience. When suddenly, from among the crowd in the rear of the group, a little old wrinkled lady named Sojourner Truth arose, and in her quivering voice interrupted the speaker with the challenging question, Is God dead? The days in which that we live in today are dark. We have evil forces that seem to be in control. An enemy smashes at the ideal that we hold dear and for which we would gladly give our lives for. But if, however, in the midst of the rush and roar and devastation of things, we can say over and over again, God is not dead. God is not dead. We shall find a new faith, a new hope that will give us courage to go on. So what we have to do is say, as Paul did, if God be for us, who can be against us? We have to be persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creatures shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, I don't mean to preach tonight, but somewhere in the Bible it tells me that we have the authority over what we are witnessing right now. We have the authority to trample over scorpions and serpents. We have the authority here in this nation. I believe in revelations that Christ gave the church the rod of iron to rule all nations over. So I know this is not our home. I know that we are passing through. I know that this is just a closer step to the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I get all that. But we are still commanded to work in these days and not let the the trials and tribulations of what we witness get us down how many times have i habitually at nauseum quoted jeremiah chapter 12 where jeremiah asked the question why do the wicked continue to prosper and god said if you're going to get wore out running the foot race with the men, how are you going to run the race with the horses? 
Folks, the horse race, I believe, has begun. So we cannot be worn down for what we have been doing over the past seven years and let that wear us down because we have to understand the horses have left the gate. When Habakkuk asked God the same question, God said, told Habakkuk, look, man, <laughs> you just hold fast, keep doing what you're doing. Brother Ron, still get out there on that street corner and hold that sign, my brother. Tell people the truth. Here, if you have a YouTube channel, if you have a radio program, get on here. Speak the word with boldness. Do what we are commanded to do because God told Habakkuk, look, man, what I am about to do, even if I told you what I was going to do, you wouldn't believe it. Not one sparrow falls to the ground outside of the will of the Father. There is a reason that this is happening. Now, I know. The word around the water cooler is Trump's got them in a trap. He knew they were going to do this. Trump set up measures to catch them in this illegal voting. Hopefully he has. Because if they are able to get away with this one, this nation is over. The American people will never have another voice in this nation ever again if they get away with this. So, yeah, there are things that are leaning to Trump has this under control, and then there's things pointing to the fact that they have stolen it right out from under us, and tribulations are straight ahead. Tonight, we're going to dive into Proverbs. We're going to go to Proverbs chapter 6, but we're going to start at verse 6, and, and I think we can learn a lot from this. We're going to go 6 through 11 right now. Go to the ant. Thou sluggard, and consider her ways, and be wise, which having no guide, no overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gather her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard, when, when wilt thou arise out of your sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an unarmed man. So what are we being told here in Proverbs? One of the wisest men of the Bible wrote this, the Word of God. If we look in contrast with the hardworking ways that the ant is analogized herein, laziness leads to the certain poverty and ruin. And the lazy person places that rest in sleep as the non-negotiable in life. And sleep is meant to give the body energy for work. It was never intended to be a way of life. Laziness will siphon off resources until the slothful have nothing left. What is one of the reasons... That this divided nation, mind you now, the Bible tells us that a, a house divided cannot, or a house divided amongst itself cannot stand. We need to be united, but that's for another show. But what is one of the things that has been promised in this nation? Free everything. Free, we're going to pay off your student loans. You get free health care. Matter of fact, you can quit your job, and we're just going to give you a little bit of salary here. Yeah, that's what the that's what the Biden Harris administration is all about. Free everything. We're going to give free health care, free everything. You can you can be lazy in life. Matter of fact, you can just sit at home and do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. I believe that's the uh the devil's catchphrase there. Do as thou wilt. Do as I want to do. God here is telling us to consider the ant. See, we, we, it's okay to sleep when it's sleep to regain your energy so that you can get out and work, go out and work for the, for the gospel. One reason we find ourselves where we are today is because the church has not been like the ant. See, when we first heard about this disease in China, we were looking upon it as everybody falling dead in the streets. 
all the videos that were coming out of China, mind you. It was the dead of winter in China when these videos started coming out of people just falling over dead due to this virus. It was in the dead of winter, yet all the trees had green leaves on them, and everybody that was dropping dead was wearing shorts and short sleeve shirts. And you go to the Weather Channel and you look at Beijing, China for that day, and it was 19 degrees. Yet the leaves were all out on the trees and people were wearing shorts. But they were falling over dead. Now, I've never been to China, so I cannot speak of how it feels in China when it's 19 degrees, but I am making an assumption it's not too different than it is here in the United States. And then it was brought to the attention that, oh, wait a minute, something ain't making sense here. These coronavirus videos we're seeing coming out of China, it's winter time, And they're wearing shorts and there's leaves on the trees. And then the video started surfacing about a week later where it looked like it was winter and everybody was wearing coats, blah, blah, blah. And so what did the church do? It was the church like the ant. When the church saw this coming, I told my wife, The minute the first case arose, matter of fact, the first case, the first case was reported here in the United States the very day that Nancy Pelosi handed the impeachment to the Senate. And I told my wife then, they're going to use this. They're going to mandate all these things. And I went to the doctor and got a note stating I don't have to wear a mask. Because I'm not bowing to this tyranny. I'm not bowing to the feet of Satan. But what I mean by the ant is the church saw this coming. I prepared. I prepared myself to battle this enemy that was coming. I got in. I got in the relationship with God, and I said, "I'm going to stand against this in Jesus' name." And I'm not trying to toot my own bugle here, but what I'm saying is. Did the church prepare itself? Nope. They were not like the ant. They slept. They were asleep. And when it came upon them, when this poverty came upon them, just like the Word of God said it would, if you sleep and if you slumber, slumber, and if you're lazy, when it came upon the church, they were not prepared. And poverty came upon the church. Poverty came upon the church, and they closed their doors. And the power of God evacuated the United States. Now, I've had people argue with me, no, God hasn't left the United States. Really? Really? I know if I tell my son, okay, (laughs) don't touch that hot burner. Because it's going to burn you. And my son reaches out and touches that hot burner and gets burnt. I'm the type of person, I'm not, if I see him reaching for that burner, I'm not going to grab his hand and pull it back. I'm going to go ahead and let him do it. Because once he suffers it, he'll know not to touch that burner again. I imagine, this is my opinion, I imagine God being the same way. I have told you these things. I have told you these things are coming. I have sent my watchman up on a wall to sound the alarm to tell you that these things are coming. So you know what? Since you didn't listen, since you didn't prepare, I'm going to let that burner burn you so that you'll learn your lesson. Let's read on. Verse 12 through 14. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a forward mouth. And he rinks with his eyes, and he speaketh with his feet, and he teaches with his fingers. Forwardness is in his heart, and he deviseth mischief continually, and he soweth discord. So, what's this saying here? It means that, that people refer to in these verses, can best be described as hucksters, okay? (laughs) A huckster is someone who pretends to be a friend, who who basically tells people all the things that they want to hear, but he does this to get 
something in return. And a huckster takes advantage of people. The, the person will use every deceit in the book to get his way. This lifestyle is one that God will not bless. So think about this. God has told us that the naughty person, the wicked man, walketh with a forward mouth. And he tells you everything you need to know. He'll say, ah, you know what? We're going to do this for you. We're going to give you free health care. And then just kind of wink because he, he's a huckster. All right? He's a hustler. He's a pool hall hustler. He knows what he's going to do. When you go into a pool hall and you're playing pool against somebody that's a hustler, they're going to let you win a bunch of games. But but their intent in their heart and what they're really about, they're hit, they're hiding it. But they're giving you the illusion as though you're gaining ground until they're ready to snatch it away from you. A huckster. Are we seeing a, a, a huckster? Have we been played? Have we been hustled? That's the question. Now I'm not I'm not degrading Trump, and I'm not going against Trump, but I am saying this. We would not be here today in this situation had Hillary been put in jail. All of the corrupt in the Russia collusion, Comey, all of them, if they had already been put in jail, even when the Hunter Biden laptop came out just mere weeks ago, if they had been put into jail, we would not be dealing with this situation right now. But um, everything that Trump promised us he would do, as far as that's concerned, of draining the swamp, yeah, the low-hanging fruit's gone. Uh, the FBI, the judges, uh, he, I mean, I'm not, I'm not slamming Trump by no means. I'm just saying that the true root of evil, the ones that are truly in charge, they're still running free, and now we're sitting where we are right now having this election stolen from us. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Number 15. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly, suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. That's self-explanatory. Because people who take advantage of others show destruction in others' lives, they will reap destruction. You know, just like us, they have been sowing to the wind over and over and over, and at some point we know that they're going to reap the whirlwind, just like we will. Is it going to be, is this election, you know, could, could, could this have really been a setup? So for the, for the final finale, Trump is able to expose the ultimate of corruption that of which stealing the vote away from the American. Could this be the keystone that causes this giant to collapse? I don't know. We're going to wait and see. Let's do uh, 16 through 19 and listen very close. Because if you identify with any of these, you better drop to your knees tonight, which I do. We all are guilty of these, and we need to repent because that's the only thing that's going to bring this nation back. You want to make America great again? Repent for these things right here. These six things do the, does the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, abortion, and, and, and this nation is about to have two people in a governing position of this nation that wants to slaughter and shed innocent blood in the womb up until birth? Are you kidding me? Hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imagination, feet that be swift and running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. 
So the passage here, it, it enumerates things that God hates. It's, it's, it's clear. It's in a numerical manner for easy memorization. And the first five things mentioned in this list are body parts. And it set in sequence that, that moves from the head to the feet. And these five items concern general moral characteristics where we see pride, dishonesty, a violent and manipulative character, and the last two are types of people who specifically belong to a court or governing system. Let's read these last two again. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. I hope you're prepared for this. Now, I don't think if Trump is not able to pull this off and Biden does get into office, I don't think that on January the 21st that Christianity is going to become a felony. But I'm going to lather you up to the fact, and you better saddle up on the fact They're coming after us. They're already coming after us. Why do you think they've closed the church over this COVID but yet left the abortion clinics open? Why are they shutting down gatherings to worship the Lord but yet they're letting their bars and their uh, liquor stores stay open? Step back and ask yourself why their demonic cronies that own the big businesses here are allowed to stay open when, when you small mom and pop retail here just trying to feed your family has to close down they are coming after us people and if we do not have on the full armor of god we're not going to survive okay let's do uh 20 through 24 here you know folks i'm going to get through this chapter and we're going to worry about the things that's going on in the world a little bit later in the show because we, we've got to come to God right now. There, if this is not an example of us being out here on an ocean by ourselves with nothing but the water supporting us, and at any given minute we're going to drown, if this is not an example of, of, of how severe we need to call down the thunder of God in our lives in this nation right now, we're never going to get it. My son, 20 through 24, my son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Blind them continually upon thy heart and tie them about your neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee, and when thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou wakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp. And the way, and excuse me, and the law is light, and the reproofs of instruction are the way of life, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Here we have to understand that this final section of Proverbs 6 here that we just went over, it's another warning about sexual immorality. And what this is, is it begins with the, non, the now familiar appeal for the son to heed his father's words. The, the, the father's teaching function as a guide. It's a, it's a, it's a guardian. It's a, it's a companion. And they are meant to accompany the son wherever he goes. And the father's teaching is to shed light on the moral decisions of life and to help the young man recognize when a woman seeks to pull him into her web in sin through seductive words. And I would again go and take this a little further. Now, I'm not trying to add to the Scripture here. Please understand that. But, you know, when it talks about this evil woman, Lust, because if we move down to the very next verse, 25, lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. So I want to expand. 
expand. Let me expand. I don't want to add to, but since it mentioned lust, what are we dealing here? What's, what party is wanting to take over? It's a party of lust. It's a party of lust for money, power. And look at the sexual abominations that come with this leadership, with transgenderism, homosexuality, lust, greed, power, everything that that God hates. And although this was an analogy of a father telling his son what to be watching for, this is God telling us for years what we are to be watching for, and we have fallen into this web of this evil woman. No, we haven't gone out and literally grabbed us a whore and wrecked a marriage, but we have latched our, we have hitched our wagon to the, the whore that, we, that is of this Babylon. I mean, how many times have we covered the, the modern-day idols when in Moab they, they ran to their high places when God started bringing judgment? When God started bringing judgment here to America, we ran to our high places, Hollywood, the sports teams. And what are those idols doing now? They're turning on us. We hitched our wagon to the whore of this world. We have allowed the lust of this to conquer our flesh. And damage our spirit. And I believe this time God is trying to bring us back. He's trying to settle us down. He's trying to discipline us. Hey, you better wake up. You better wake up. All right, let's move down to uh, 30 through 35, and then this will be the end of chapter 6. Men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his soul when he's hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding, he that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the rage of a man, therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance he will not regard any ransom neither will he rest content though thou givest many gifts and so basically in closing of this what the writer makes this comparison to between adultery and theft is even a thief who steals out of hunger must repay his victim seven times over so how much more will adultery bring down a a harsh verdict on an adulterer for this is the worst of all actions here, people. The marriage bed is to be held in high honor, and those who violate this will be punished to the worst degree. And the young man must understand this, for it will serve him as well as he enters the world where this kind of behavior goes on. But see, this is the world that we live in, folks. This, this new administration that is trying to rip its power from the hands of us, this is what they're all about. This is what they're wanting to, to train society to do. Lust, sexual immorality, everything ungodly, the Antichrist spirit. Is here. So, what are we to do? <clears throat> well, I can tell you right now, regardless of what Trump's got going on behind the scenes right now, we better drop to our knees and repent and pray. Give our lives back to Jesus Christ, because I'm going to tell you what, folks, if you've never listened to me before, better listen to me now (laughs) if they pull this off they're coming after you they're coming after me and they're coming after us with a vengeance our only hope is in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and we're coming to a point to where you may have to make that decision are you going to follow the world or are you going to follow Christ because it's going to mean your life at that moment 
And are you going to resist this tyranny? Are you going to resist the devil? Or are you going to cower down like the weak-willed candy churches in America today and close your doors and put on your mask and follow the crowd at chow time? Looks like we just have a mere few days before that decision is going to have to be made. It's up to you. Be right back. Smokehouse. To talk with Smokehouse, dial 712-770-3857. That number once again is 712-770-3857. Then dial the access code 252-380, followed by the pound sign. And you will be placed in the queue. Call in and join the show. Smokehousestudios.net God is among us. The door to the ark is slamming shut. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say will be used against you. You are not listening. I want your job to be taken from you. A protest has turned violent at California, Berkeley. This is why we're fighting for the soul of America. You should be able to share ideas without fear of being fired from your job or shouted down. You are not to be heard. This is one of the few things one could say we have no precedent for in the United States. You have the right to remain silent. The only way we separate the good ideas from the bad ideas is to be free to say whatever we want about them. Anything you say will be used against you. There's no free speech for fascists. Your posts on Facebook, Twitter, and social media will be saved to shame you. Kevin Hart has stepped down from hosting this year's Oscars. Anything you say that we don't like will be used to shut you up. You can't be funny. It's creating an atmosphere of fear and repression, and it's going to bust. You cannot think differently. It makes it difficult for you to learn from other people. Isn't it spooky you were having this discussion? You can't challenge us. Kids grew up dipped in Purell, playing soccer games where they never kept score. There is no debate. The type of diversity that they hate is diversity of thought. We reserve the right to be offended by everything. No university should ever create a safe space. You're not going to protect people. And so the best you can do is to make them strong. It bothers me for the young people who are being deprived of anything that could open their minds. You have the right to remain silent. There you go, folks. That's what's coming. Taking away your rights think your rights are gone now you wait till uh <laughs> january the 20th man they're coming for your guns they're coming for your speech they're coming for your bible and i can just judge by the volume of people i see out there wearing a mask how many people are gonna be in line and that line's gonna be long <laughs> not me hello sister abby sorry you is late filling the pews you missed a lot girl so you better uh, get after it after the show Go back and listen to the beginning. It's important. <coughs> Hello, Sister Elizabeth, Brother Ron, Brother Chuck, and all of you out there. We need to ask for prayers for a good friend of mine, Brother Terry. I saw him today. We uh, Dad and I was able to go to a ham fest up in Lebanon and uh, really had a good time seeing a lot of people that uh, we talk to on a regular basis on the radio but have never met. So it was good to uh, put a face with a voice. and. Uh, uh, a lot of people that we met sounded a lot taller on the radio. Good-looking people. They had a uh, they had a face for radio. That's for sure. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Man. Uh, good people. Good Christian people. Uh, we're on a uh, a prayer line. Is what it is. Which is a uh, it's a devotion every morning on Ham Radio. It's good to see all that. But uh, Terry, uh, he was there. We need prayers for his wife. Uh, she's having some issues right now. And, I told him I'd ask him to pray. Uh, we, I'd ask y'all to pray for his wife, Donna. 
So on today, a statement from President Donald J. Trump. We all know why Joe Biden is rushing to falsely pose as the winner and why his media allies are trying so hard to help him. They don't want the truth to be exposed. The simple fact is the election is far from over, and Joe Biden has not been certified as the winner of any states, let alone any of the highly contested states headed for mandatory recounts or states where our campaign has valid and legitimate legal challenges that could determine the ultimate victor. In Pennsylvania, for example, our legal uh, observers were not permitted meaningfully access to watch the counting process. And legal votes decide who is president, not the media news. So beginning Monday, our campaign will start uh, uh, prosecuting our case in court to ensure election laws are fully upheld and the rightful winner is seated. The American people are entitled to an honest election that means counting all legal ballots and not counting any illegal ballots. This is the only way to ensure the public has full confidence in our election. And it remains shocking that the Biden campaign refuses to agree with this basic principle and wants ballots counted even if they are fraudulent, manufactured, or cast by an ineligible or deceased voter. Only a party engaged in wrongdoing would unlawfully keep observers out of the courtroom and then fight in the court to block their access. So, what is Biden hiding? I will not rest until the American people have the honest vote count that they deserve and that Democrats demand. President Donald J. Trump. So, from the desk of our president, this is where it stands. This is he, we're ready to go to battle here. And, folks, we're not battling Joe Biden. We're not battling. We are battling the spiritual wickedness. We are battling the beast, the globalist beast that is rising. This is what we battle. We battle principalities, powers, and spiritual wickedness in high places. And Brother David's got his radio face on. Hello, Brother Nylon. How you doing, man? And this is where we find ourselves. Now, one thing that this enemy has been successful in doing is getting people, society, to base their decisions here, to base their decisions on emotion. If you talk to any Generation Z or X or whatever this liberal agenda or this liberal uh, age group is, They don't base their decisions on reason. They don't base their decision on logic. They have been trained to base their decision on emotion. And what their group is all for. Okay, I tell this story all the time. When the wife and I were headed off to our honeymoon, uh, Hurricane Joaquin was coming up through the Bahamas. And we had booked a cruise to go out to the Caribbean for seven days. And it was all, everything was prepaid for. Uh, The the entire cruise, the flights, everything was paid for. I think we dropped like $5,000 on this thing, okay? But Hurricane Joaquin happened to be coming up across the, uh, not the Bahamas, but uh, Bermuda there. We we had to fly through that hurricane to get to Puerto Rico to get on the boat. So we took our flight out of Nashville, landed in Charlotte, and the first plane that backed away from the tarmac there, it had like a brake issue and had to be pulled back. And then we were taken off of that aircraft, put onto another one. Well, in the process of making it to the runway and that one, we lost our steering. This is no joke, folks. So it had to be towed back to the tarmac. And they did not have another aircraft to put us on that night. So everybody had to lay over that Friday night, and then they would fly us all out Saturday. But the problem was we had to be in Puerto Rico that afternoon because the boat was going to be leaving that Friday night. So us flying on into Puerto Rico for Saturday morning would do us no good. So they told people, 
we can we can go ahead and fly you to Puerto Rico Saturday, and I think there was 150 people on that flight that was taking that cruise, okay? So there was a lot of angry people that were on that flight. So everybody was getting back in line, getting their flights changed so they could land in Puerto Rico Saturday. They were trying to call the cruise line to see where the next spot. Anyway, I had told the wife, I said, here's the deal. And we were last in line anyway. I said, I'm done. You know, I don't have to listen to uh, man. God has already told me twice by these planes having mechanical issues that uh, he don't want us going. And I said, so when we get up there, what we're going to do is tell this man, send me a plane ticket back to Nashville. I'm going to the house. We'll worry about it later. All of our stuff was insured, so I wasn't worried about it. Um. But the point is, we had been standing in line all day, and we were the second to the last to get up to the uh, gentleman that was taking care of the tickets. And uh, this little liberal girl, about 20 years old, come down the down. She's like, are you going on the cruise? And I was like, yeah. She's like, well, come over here and join us because we need to make our voice heard in order for them to understand our needs and i was like i was like darling listen <laughs> I'm like, this liberal mindset that you got it's not going to accomplish anything okay not a thing they are strapped they don't have another plane to put us on the boat's not going to wait us joining a stupid crowd and chanting or protesting or whatever it is is not going to remedy the situation. The airlines are, are willing to accommodate us by giving us a free room, okay? Uh, they're doing everything in their power. All they, they, they don't have to honor getting us there by Friday night. All they have to honor is just getting us to Puerto Rico. And they said they would do that Saturday. So we have no grievance with the airline here, okay? So you just go on about your way. And anyway, we got up to the counter, and I told the old boy, he goes, I'm going to tell you like I told everybody else. And I said, no, sir, I'm going to tell you this. And as long as we're in agreement, there's not going to be a problem. He said, what's that? I said, just give me a ticket back to Nashville, and me and you are going to be fine. And he just laughed. He said, now I can do that. I said, okay, buddy. Appreciate it. So everything was cool. But my point is, this is this is the mindset. They they base decisions on emotion, okay? And now that the news media is setting the narrative to their to their group of people that this election is over and Biden is the winner, understanding that they've taught these people to make decisions on emotion, listen to what CNN said today as they started reporting Biden is a winner. Dan, what are your thoughts? <clears throat> it's, um... Well, it's easier to be a parent this morning. It's easier to be a dad. It's easier to, it's easier to tell your kids character matters. It matters. Telling the truth matters. Being a good person matters. And it's easier for a whole lot of people. If you're Muslim in this country, you, you, you don't have to worry if the president doesn't want you here. If you're an immigrant, you don't have to worry if the president's going to be happier to have babies snatched away or send, send dreamers back for no reason. <laughs> this is vindication for a lot of people. <laughs> It's vindication for a lot of people crying on TV, trying to show what what a great feat this has been, what a journey this has been, and now the emotions are just flying. You know, and good and well, he's faking it because they know that Biden is not the president yet. But yet, that lying, deceitful tongue is still at work. It's still at work. All right. Now, I know you've heard all and seen all the videos, but, you know, social media is still censoring. If you try to say anything about the election, you're censored. 
If you put up any post, they block it. They pull it down. Now, if you're unaware of what was talked about, Steve Pachinik came on the Alex Jones show, and when I first heard it, I jumped on the bandwagon. I shared the video because I wanted people to be aware of it. Now, I was telling people to be cautious, be mindful of the information that's within it until it's checked out. But I spent a lot of time today looking into this, and uh, here's what it's about. Trump has created a new organization that is known as the CISA, and it is the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. And he put it together in 2018, and they are to identify threats and share information and assist in incident response in defense of the nation's critical infrastructure. And he created this very soon after the midterm elections in 2018. So, under this, now there's nothing on the website that states this. Steve Pajenik, P- Steve Pajenik came on the Alex Jones show this week and said that they used this CISA, this Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, to put these invisible watermarks on the official ballots so that they could they could track these ballots and know where they are at any, any given time, who they were given to, and if it came to a recount, basically they had their little scanner, and if they scanned a ballot that did not have this mark on it, they would know that it was not official. And so that ballot would then be thrown in the trash and unable to be counted. Okay, whether that's true or not about the watermark, I do not know. I don't. But Trump did create this CISA, the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, to identify threats here. And uh, basically what it's supposed to do here or what its what its uh, position is, here is to do it is to basically watch everything that goes on in this nation it is basically created it was created uh november the 16th of 2018 and that legislation it rebranded the department of homeland security's national protection and programs director as the cyber security infrastructure security agency and it transferred resources and responsibilities uh from uh the original agency, the MPPD, or the NPPD, I'm sorry. And prior to the passage of this bill, the NPPD managed almost all the DHS's cybersecurity matters. So basically, what Trump did was he kind of changed it up, gave it a new name, and now it's responsible for protecting the nation's critical infrastructure from physical and cyber threats. And the mission of this is to build the national capacity to defend against cyber attacks and to work with the federal government to provide cybersecurity tools and incident response services and assessment capabilities to safeguard the .gov networks that support essential operations or partner departments and agencies. So basically, it's a 24-7 cyber situational awareness analysis, incident report, and cyber defense capabilities of the federal government, the state, local, tribal, and the territorial governments. And it's the private sector and international partners. Now, the second important center, which is known as the NRMC, which is the National Risk Management Center, is a planning analysis and collaboration center working to identify and address the most significant risk to the nation's infrastructure. So basically, I mean, I could read on and on, but you get the idea. This this organization was put together in response to the threat or the accusation that Russia had hacked our election with Trump the first time. So he put this in place as a way to monitor and do all of these things. And uh, you're right, Chuck, yes, the blockchain technology that's adopted by the banks as well. That's correct. It's 
the blockchain uh, that's with the post office where they can keep track of these things that are marked if they are marked in this blockchain effort. So it is it is cybersecurity basically to keep our enemies from taking advantage of us. And so since this was created after the midterms, as of right now, nothing on this website confirms that there have been watermarks put on the ballots. I do not know, Steve Pachinik. I do not know if this is um, – some sort of misinformation that he's feeding us as part of the steal, okay? <laughs> but if we listen to Pam Bondi and Rudy Giuliani and all of their press conferences they've given this week, how they have stated, we have documented proof of them falsifying ballots, allowing dead people to vote. We have proof of everything that they have been doing that has been illegal and unconstitutional. And when we make it to court and we present our evidence, basically half of the votes that have already been distributed for Biden nationwide are going to have to be thrown out legally. So I have no idea if it has anything to do with the watermark, but yes, this organization, that is what their duty is is to monitor things like this. And this is why Trump has said that, you know, they're taking this all the way to court. So there has been corruption that has been found, and I'll just cover uh, a little bit of that tonight. Here we go. They are still not in compliance. Our votes are being suppressed. We cannot count the votes properly. What's happening is they have moved the barrier up to six feet, but they took away the ballot machines that were in the front row and moved them to the back of the building. The court order is in effect. They will not give us access, and the sheriff has decided not to come down here to enforce that court order. We're there, supposedly observing, but we can't see. We're further away than I am from you all here. Um, hundreds, uh, at least a hundred feet away from open ballots that go back out of our sight. We can't see them. We don't know what's happening to them. Um, it's just, uh, there's no way for us to meaningfully observe the process from where they have us. Tell us how many ballots approximately went through that process that you had no chance to observe? Based on the counts that we've heard, it's about 125,000, maybe more. The mummy, Biden, rose from his slumber to remind the American public of his insolence, fumbling giant words on the teleprompter in front of a crowd of corporatic ghost jeeps. I know watching these vote tallies on TV moves very slower, slow, and it's... Speaking of ghosts, of the many things Biden didn't mention was the overwhelming evidence of a ghost in the machine as Dominion Software, the second largest seller of voting machines, flooded our national election with. OK, did you notice the? OK, he's going to be telling you now about the software that was used. In these voting machines. And he'll go into detail. As you know, there was a software used that gave 6,000 votes to Biden in Michigan when once figured out they had to give those 6,000 votes back to Trump. And it was because of this software. This software did it. And there's like 47 more counties in Michigan that uses the same software as well as 30 states use this software. So it is safe to assume that if this software skewed 6,000 votes in one county, it probably did it in the 47 other counties, and it probably did it in the 30 other states. Safe to assume. Listen to the name of this software. The overwhelming evidence of a ghost in the machine, as Dominion Software, the second largest seller of voting machines, flooded our national election with... Dominion Software. Dominion software what does satan want to do what does he want to do he's a demon he wants to take dominions uh, around he wants to take take over the earth and the name of this software is actually called dominion it's in our face folks very slower slow and it's 
Speaking of ghosts, of the many things Biden didn't mention was the overwhelming evidence of a ghost in the machine. As Dominion Software, the second largest seller of voting machines, flooded our national election with glitches favoring Joe Biden. In Antrim County, ballots were counted for Democrats that were meant for Republicans, causing a 6,000 vote swing against our candidates. Iranian elections, and the Washington Post reported on the instance of the 2016 Russian election conforming purposefully to Benford's law in order to hide vote rigging. I've been active in this since 1958. That's 62 years. I am the angriest I have been in that entire six decades. You have a group of corrupt people who have absolute contempt for the American people who believe that we are so spineless, so cowardly, so unwilling to stand up for ourselves, that they can steal the presidency and we'll wring our hands, bring in a few lawyers, and do nothing. The videos of incidents of potential fraud poured in on social media as Silicon Valley did all they could to stop it. I'm not going to show the name because uh, the boss is here and don't want us to, you know, and I can't take it. They won't let me. President Donald Trump. And not the only one we found in the trash. Now am examining this ballot that was received by a Queens Village resident. Um, and with all of the Democrat candidates pre-filled in on the ballot. I know a lot of people wanted to know how did it get pre-filled in? Was it done by pen? Was it done by hand? As I put my hand over... Every one of the pre-filled in Democrats here on the ballot, I can see it was definitely not done by hand. It looks like it was done maybe by a stamper or a machine. Maybe it was run through a machine. This is a two page absentee ballot. Now this is the uh, envelope that it came in also. Incredibly official looking. It says it's official, official absentee ballot envelope. And it is in several different languages. And it has a, a barcode as you can see, the voter ID number. Oh my God. Hi. Hi. Hey, so you with the elections? You're the Bureau of Elections, right? Well, what, I mean, I'm just a volunteer. We're just wondering what, okay, I understand you're a volunteer and you're just doing your job. What's all these, are these mail-in ballots or what's these coming in? What are these? Uh-huh. These are my intake here. What's that? My intake as well. Yeah, because we're wondering why are ballots being handled down here and not up there with the elections? So we're curious about that. Okay, yeah, the, the gentleman who's in charge of this, I think should be right back down. Who, what's his name? Um, gosh, what is his name? Do you know his name? Hey, the order's pretty clear. I've been a lawyer for 30 years. What, what's, what, can you tell us what's unclear about it? You're a private lawyer and acting in the government capacity. I'm a lawyer who represents the city. Great. The city is evaluating it. And I can't tell you anything more than They're that. evaluating a judge's order? Yeah, what the order means. And when they're ready to talk to you about it, they will. But I can assure you that they're not violating it under any... The order is currently in effect. Michelle, they're not violating it under any interpretation. You guys had eight attorneys. I think it was eight attorneys entering your appearance on this. I don't understand why eight attorneys need to evaluate this order. I did it all by myself. Okay. It says we that no are... later than 1030 today... You're to follow the election code, and we, my people, my clients, representatives, are to be within six feet of the process. We have read the order, and we are complying with the order, and we will discuss it with you in, in a bit. While the Stop the Steal Facebook group was removed, one of the fastest growing groups in Facebook's history, representing Americans merely trying to get to the bottom of what they were seeing. Regardless of the bag of goods the Mockingbird media wants America to swallow. We just haven't seen it. You know, it hasn't been presented. There's all kinds of stuff flying on the internet. But well, when we, when we look friend, into it, it doesn't pan out. Just a week ago, Washington Post and ABC News put out a poll. And let's, let's make sure that we realize these are major platforms, okay? This is the Washington Post of Watergate fame. It's also owned by Jeff Bezos, the richest man in the world. ABC News, top-rated newscast in America. They put out a poll that said Biden was going to win Wisconsin by 17%. Now, to get this number correct, we have to move the decimal not once. We have to move the decimal twice 
to get in the vicinity of what's actually going on in Wisconsin. Because right now, the current actual is Joe Biden up by point. 6%. And I say current because we have not accepted that as final and there will be a recount. But the more important takeaway here is uh, that this is not just a mistake. This is disinformation. This is propaganda meant to suppress the Trump vote, meant to depress Trump supporters in Wisconsin. This is willful. This is a decision to try to put their thumbs on the scale. So we need to be aware of it and you need to be incredibly skeptical during this contentious time in our country of anything that you hear from these legacy media platforms like the Washington Post and ABC and like Fox News and AP trying to get you to believe fake news that Arizona is decided. And as we speak right now, this just in breaking news. Uh, tonight, Fox News cancels Judge Janine on Saturday to spew their nonsense that Joe Biden won the election. Fox Post's outrageous schedule. Fox News canceled the widely popular Judge Jeanine Pirro show on Saturday to spew their anti-Trump propaganda. It looks like that this is only for the week. It's not officially canceled totally, but at least for tonight, they're going to cancel it so they can talk about Biden being president. So Fox News, folks, is a part of this now. Uh, it appears the, the deep state now has their foot in the door and they're going to run with it. They're going to run with it. This candidate here talking about the new Obama Biden care. Check this out. I can tell you this. Excuse my language, but think about it. Rock and I think it's a right for people to have bad health care. For people to have bad health care. <laughs> for people to have bad cat care. <laughs> Bad a cat care. <laughs> we got to hear that again. We need a little bit of humor. <laughs> I can tell you this. Excuse my language, but think about it. Rock and I think it's a right for people to have bad a cat care. For people to have bad a cat care. Bad a cat care. I don't know. I don't know what bad a cat care is. I don't. I don't think that I voted for that. We're going. We're going to say that one and play that a little later. Okay. Uh, here. Here he is now. The uh, Republican. Uh, the Republican person there in uh, Michigan. Listen to what she had to say about these glitches in the voter machine. If all this wasn't enough in Antrim County, ballots were counted for Democrats that were meant for Republicans causing a 6,000 vote swing against our candidates. The county clerk came forward and said, tabulating software glitched and caused a miscalculation of the votes. Since then, we have now discovered that 47 counties use this same software in the same capacity. Antrim County had to hand count all of the ballots, and these counties that use this software need to closely examine their results for similar discrepancies. The people of Michigan deserve a transparent and open process. So they have 47 counties that had this glitch and also 30 states. Now, Greg Jarrett, was it Greg Jarrett? Was he the one that Hannity was talking to? I can't remember. Uh, but listen to what he had to say about the... No, it wasn't Greg Jarrett. It was Jay Seculo, man. It was Trump's lawyer. Listen to what he had to say. Computer glitch. I'm told that other states... We have not confirmed it yet. We're working on a yeah. report that there might be as many as 30 states that use that software. Now, that's one thing. Well, here's I want to go back I, I to... Wanna, the, I want to say this. Now, uh, Paul, uh, Sean, you just said ahead. something really important. Really important. If 30 states have used a software that has already proved to be a glitch of 6,000 votes in one balloting area, and now you've got over 30 states using it, <laughs> lawyers should be, for the campaign, in every one of those jurisdictions, demanding the fix and demanding a, re a manual recount. Post-election litigation is important to protect the integrity of the election process, as the president said, and to protect the Constitution, frankly. Uh, we just heard from John Solomon that the FBI indeed is being diligent, is involved, and we all hope he is exactly right. 
So the FBI is getting involved in all of this, and you know, apparently there there could be something to these watermarks. I'm, you know, I just don't want to mislead you and run with the narrative, and then there, that not be the case, because then I'd be uh, proven a liar, and we don't want to do that. So, um, but it it does look like that they have busted them and caught them in election fraud. Of course, we know that they they have. We knew this what this coronavirus was. And again, let me reiterate that they Biden supporters are out there in mass in great volume celebrating the victory tonight. We're supposed to be under a covid warning. Of all people, the liberals are the ones that are the most scared of this disease and wear their mask and chew us out because we don't wear our mask, but yet now they're the ones hugging each other, kissing on each other. Standing shoulder to shoulder with no mask on, celebrating this great victory. So uh, COVID is officially over, apparently. Apparently. Now, this is a tad lengthy. When I say lengthy, it's only about eight minutes. But Millie Weaver is producing a program called Sunrise, and this is just the trailer. But in it, she uh, shares the information on the major group, the one major group that's responsible in taking over our nation and describe in detail how they are going to do it and go about it, folks. This is real. And listen real close to the information within. It took over two years to infiltrate these leftist organizations. These are high school kids out here. These are high school kids. He has the most comprehensive plan to redesign redesign what is broken in our nation. You say it has to be my way or the highway. I don't respond to that. You're supposed to listen to us. That's your, How old are your you job. How old I'm are 16. You? I can't you didn't vote. vote for me. They are a well-funded, tactically trained, highly organized, global subversive movement. No, this is my first time ever protesting. Wow, how do you feel? I'm very nervous um, mm-hmm. because I'm in the high-risk group for resisting arrest, or uh, risking arrest. It's <laughs> fine. Um, so I'm pretty nervous, but this is a super important cause, so I'm excited. Two minors are going to get arrested. Their parents will be in D.C. Our lawyer is down to support. Not cooperating with Capitol Police is also a charge. And so there were three banner drops and the middle group got arrested and the two side groups didn't. Because the two side groups, when the cops came by and said, you can't do this, they said, "Okay, so sorry, pulled up the banners. The top group said, no, we're staying. And so they just stayed. And it's like, if they had said, oh, so sorry, they wouldn't have gotten arrested. We turn people on the streets and confront the whole city because we can, young people in Boston, can shut down the whole city. If I have a thousand young people, I can shut down four or five highways and this city is in shackles. That's just the truth. Because momentum has been like foundational for us at Sunrise. So no big deal. You know, just realized we needed to take over the entire United States <laughs> and all the institutions in it. Um, so uh, I'm going to fast forward to when Sunrise launched. Over the past few months, momentum has grown for what I call a global Green New Deal. Yes, I'm now joined by Michael Dorsey. He's an expert on global governance and sustainability who also spent time working in the Obama administration on environmental issues. Thanks for coming in. My pleasure, Jessica. Um, So the parties are meeting in Bangkok. That aims to destroy the United States. Who are some of like the major individual donors as well as foundations. C3, like funders to date, have been folks like Hewlett Foundation, Bullet Foundation, um, the C4 Arm, um, Open Society Foundation, um, and then as individuals, our largest like in, like personal gift to date has been um, Chris Hughes. We are going to run one of the largest, most impactful youth climate electoral interventions this country has ever seen. An activated sunrise uh, revolution that's taking place across this country. Is sunrise here? Hi. Hey, oh my God. 
second sunrise, phenomenal. I made sure you had a seat up in the gallery when President Trump was uh, giving his State of the Union address. My name is Barshani and I am Sunrise's executive director. Um, I am really glad to see almost 600 of you on this call. So we're here today because black communities are rising up in Minneapolis and around the country in resistance. Um, and what we know is that uprisings, including including actions like burning buildings, um, are legitimate and powerful forms of resistance um, and are resisting brutal and violent and dehumanizing systems. The government has not cared about us for a single day of our entire goddamn lives. We know this to be true. They have failed us at every step. I love the term siege because I feel like that's exactly what we're going to do. And I all encourage you to go read the Wikipedia page for what a siege is because have that expectation that they will see us, they will feel us, and they will hear us until they are deaf with our demands. Rome was not built in the day and it was also not sieged in the day. And what does this mean? This means that we need a different tactic to target our politicians in this urgent time. Our leaders are sleeping through this crisis and we can't occupy their offices, so we have to bring the crisis to their doorsteps. We will march into their homes at midnight and make it plain and simple for them. And some upcoming things. So tomorrow morning, very exciting, we are going to Senator Lindsey Graham's house um, at 6 a.m. We'll be there from 6 to 8 with Sunrise DC. Not confrontational. There's a real power dynamic that looks like the cops are oppressing the people who are sitting lower than us. Yep. Right? They're sitting down. And when we want to hold a lot of space for a long time, what do we do? We use chains, we light the barns, we use sofas, we use heavy chairs, we use whatever we can, right? And this goes to the question somebody asked in the chat of what is direct action. We're asking you to take action maybe like you've never taken before. Uh, what we've seen over the last four years is it's not enough to march, it's not enough to go to a one-day event and then go home. We need sustained uh, disruptive action. We need an end to business as usual. We need to let the people in power know, not just politicians, but also corporations, the military, etc. the powers that be. Okay. Well, that, I appreciate you being um, here. They're so not going to go back to business as usual um, one... ever, really, but especially until we get Trump out of office. And so our call to action here in D.C., uh, I expect we're going to be planning plenty of events uh, before November 3rd as we have in the last few months. But um, one of our focuses is going to be on November 3rd, we're asking folks after they vote here in D.C. or in the uh, DMV area to come to Black Lives Matter Plaza by the White House um, to gather and to show in huge numbers that we are not going to accept a, a result of the election where Trump stays in office. This is an opportunity where we're... We found the weirdos who are coming to like go figure out how to throw down in the streets. They all came to a closet together. Right? Free the people, fight the power, fuck the police. Abolition. Free the people, fight the power, fuck the police. Abolition. Um, my pronouns are he, they. I am a uh, member of Extinction Rebellion Chicago. Um, there is an, a pretty active XRDC that I know has worked with Shutdown DC before and was very involved in the, the thing that they talked about at the front. So I'm sure that chapter is probably very active. And yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I suspect a significant number of, of folks from Chicago might go to DC, but we're also talking about going to Wisconsin, which we think is going to be a pretty important. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm. What's your name? My name's Colin. I use he/him pronouns. Um, based here in Washington D.C., actually helped co-found Shutdown D.C. last summer. Um, did quite a bit of the J20 stuff actually after Trump got elected oh, yeah. and was the co-founder there. And then yeah, was I remember uh, J20. <laughs> have started 
Yeah, 350ZC is a lot of the current organizing, so. You talk about the two camps, and that was really the secret to the success of Paris, was that you had China leading the developing countries and the U.S. leading the developed countries to the table. Now we don't have the U.S. as part of this deal anymore. Mobilization of young people was the strongest element to force politicians to understand that things have to change. Because your activism and concern can mobilize all of society. And where society goes, politicians and negotiators will have to follow. And so my request to all of you is very clear. Keep up the pressure. Don't give up. Do not relent. Let the world know that you are watching and that you are acting. And it's all coming out before Election Day. Coming soon. Hashtag Sunrise Exposed. So as we can see, folks, uh, this has not been something that just happened, okay? There's money, there's groups, there's organizations behind all this. Now, this one has just slipped my uh, radar today. Uh, This was an announcement that was put out today, I do believe, yeah, six hours ago. Uh, Let's hear what it has to say. It's only a minute long. Well, I appreciate you being here today. Let me just give you one concrete example, not anecdotal, but concrete example of what we believe to be valid voter fraud in the state of Pennsylvania. I draw your attention to an obituary listed from one Denise Ondish in Allegheny County, born 9 1946 deceased 10 2020 Her application to vote was received on 10 the day after she died. It was then mailed by the County back to her on 10 24, 2020, two days after she had legally passed away. And the ballot was then received back at the county office on November 2nd, 2020. And when you go to the Secretary of State's website today, it says that she voted in this election, effective November 2nd, 2020, a full nine days after Miss Ondish of Allegheny County passed away. This is not, excuse me, this is not empirical, this is not anecdotal. This is hard evidence, and if you do your jobs from the media, I'm sure you'll find additional examples, and this will be one of many that we will be filing with the court. Thank you very much. Wow, that was pretty powerful. Okay. That's not the only one. They found like 14,000, but apparently uh, today, they just came up with that in uh, wanted to do a press conference so that's that's incredible hello sister jamie over there in the uk hey um give us some information jamie about uh, the draconian lockdown that y'all were enduring right now i know you i know you gave it to me earlier but uh give me kind of like a right now uh of how things are over there because uh basically america is about Six weeks behind Europe. And if we have gone back and look at the historical paths of this lockdown, everything that happens over in Europe comes and follows in America just uh, mere weeks later. So uh, they're in a draconian lockdown. And uh, if you look about six weeks, that would put Biden behind the reins if they're unable to get this uh, straightened out. And with that being the case, you know, Biden's already said whatever scientists tell him, he's going to do. So listen, folks, now I know and I'm going I'm going to jump on Trump about this, too. I understand science. I understand them looking into these type of matters and uh, giving the president advice. But these scientists, Fauci and uh, Bricks or whatever her name is, they are not elected officials. We elect officials to dictate rule and law that we allow them to do. They are not elected officials. So it's okay if they give the president advice, okay? But in order... For us to follow laws and rules, it must come from our elected officials. And Trump never did tell anybody to shut down. 
He left it up to the state governors and local mayors to decide that, which I feel was a mistake. But at least, you know, there's one thing we can say. If Trump does lose this thing and Biden takes over, there is one thing that is for certain. God's word did not return void because Trump exposed what was done in the darkness and shone it into the light. And if we as a nation didn't fall on our face and repent for that and beg for God's mercy and for him to heal our land, then we have nobody to blame but ourselves. Not Trump, not Barr, ourselves. So at least if it's the will of God for Biden to be in power so that he can drive us headfirst into absolute— you Now, we've talked about it on the show before, folks how all this judgment we've been seeing as far as the slow bleed was the analogy that we used, the slow bleed. We were telling, we've been telling you at some point, God's going to cut the artery of judgment. We're going to bleed out. This may be it. This may be it. And we have nobody to blame but ourselves. So over in Europe right now, it's half one. I guess it's a, uh, one thirty in the morning in Europe right now. So uh, everything, people are asleep, uh, but it's back to only essential shops being allowed to open. No socializing. All tourist and entertainment industries are closed down. And the only difference between right now and what they endured in the U.K. in March is that the schools and colleges are open. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got the idea, Sister Jamie. You you were talking about it being shut. Uh, I got it. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so anyway, uh, okay, so basically it's just like it was back in March, only the schools are open. So uh, this is what we got to look forward to, folks, another lockdown if uh, if Biden prevails. But, again, the evidence is still coming out. Now, this was blocked off of Facebook. Articles were written from the left-wing media stating that this was not the fact. But the machines in Arizona, and it's told now that it's coming out in New Mexico. Uh, but apparently these ballots in Arizona are kind of like our ACT test where you just fill in the little bubble. Okay. And uh, let's see, Brother Jack said that that's the mistake that Trump did is he followed the Constitution and let the states handle the situation of covid the savior u.s government was supposed to jump to tell us all what to do <laughs> exactly thank you brother jack and thank you for tuning in brother glad to have you man that's pretty cool i uh, got a lot of live listeners tonight so um <clears throat> apparently it's like the act test where you fill in the little bubble you know with your uh, ink pen or your number two pencil and uh we're calling it Sharpie Gate. Now, when you go to Google and look up Sharpie Gate, they, they discredit it. They say it's false information. It never happened. But apparently, <clears throat> allegedly, these voting machines, they were handing out Sharpie markers to those who were voting so they could fill out their ballot with a Sharpie marker instead of an ink pen or pencil. Well, when you scan it through the machine, it cannot read the Sharpie ink. It's designed to read pen or pencil ink, and that Sharpie magic marker, it won't read. So they're giving Sharpies to people to vote, and their votes are not being counted. Uh, there was a gentleman that was standing outside uh, the exit poll there when people would come out from voting, doing a man-on-the-street interview with his cell phone. And of course, that video got blocked. You can't find that video anywhere. But he was actually interviewing people that were voting that this was happening to and showing proof that, yes, this was happening. Our vote is not counting at all. It was not counting at all. So, Laura Ingram last night had a group of people on that this happened to from Arizona. And check out what they had to say. So um, here in Arizona, one of the biggest issues that we have right now is the use of a Sharpie pen that was used at the different polling places. Um, on the Democrats' own website here in Arizona, they actually say, do not use red ink or permanent marker because this may result in a false read by the ballot machines. So that comes from their own website. So when we showed up to polling stations, they only gave us Sharpie markers. 
I specifically said, I don't want to use a Sharpie marker. Do you have a regular pen? She said, no, I only have a Sharpie marker. Use it. You're going to be fine. I said, what if it bleeds through to the other side? She said, don't worry about it. We've been doing it all day. It's not a big deal. So we went ahead and used Sharpie markers. You run it through the machine at the end. When you get done voting, you run it through the machine at the end. And then what happens in Arizona is you can go to this website to track your ballot. And from what I have seen, and, and it's not just me, it's like all of, I have groups of neighbors and friends that as well this has happened to. But what happens is now when you go to check our ballot, it says that it is um, some, like for me, Personally, it says I'm not even a registered voter now. And a lot of people, it says that their ballot is, is it hasn't been read. It hasn't been counted. It doesn't okay, exist. Okay, And all those people behind you, did they have similar issues? Yeah, these are my neighbors, yes. Oh, all of you. In Michigan, at least four absentee voters were older than the oldest person on record, including Jason Lemoyne Daniel, who was born in 1850, making him 170 years old. In Wisconsin, there are 3,684,726 active registered voters. They counted 3,288,771 votes. That's an unbelievable 89% turnout. Not to mention that Joe Biden, who averaged less than 100 people at his rallies, while Trump averaged in the tens of thousands, has somehow broken Obama's voting record with 50.4%, a manufactured blue wave that should have flipped the Senate and strengthened the House, but it didn't. Virginia Representative Abigail Spanberger barely won, but said Democrats, quote, lost races we shouldn't have. She said defund the police almost cost me my race because of an attack ad. Don't say socialism ever again. And we are supposed to believe that Biden gained over one million votes in Pennsylvania since the morning after the election. And also that it is completely normal that thousands of Nevada votes were cast by non-residents. And most of all, We're supposed to believe that America overwhelmingly, historically, voted for a senile, corrupt, pedophile globalist over their own future, the future of their children, and the future of America. This is about the American people. Do the American people have the right, in an honest election, with honest, legitimate ballots, to pick their leader? Or are we now just sheep? to be dominated by the high-tech businesses, the news media, and the various political machines, and are we supposed to surrender? So I think this is one of the great, this is a crisis in the American system, comparable to Washington on Christmas Eve, or comparable to Lincoln at Gettysburg. This is a genuine, deep crisis of our survival. John Bound reporting. All right. Now, folks, I have been doing some digging, so as you can tell, uh, the Sharpie issue, uh, the evidence is there. Now, the question is, we know that lawsuits have been filed in Pennsylvania, uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, Georgia. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be done in Arizona if it hadn't already. Uh, but the point is, is now their state judges are kicking these lawsuits out. They're saying there's no validity to them, so they've been kicked out. So I don't know the process on which you go but today uh when we had our local ham fest here uh right outside of nashville there's a uh, a repeater that we talk on two meter repeater here in nashville and every morning at six o'clock in the morning they have a uh a bible net and uh, i guess there's about 20 of us that get on there and we have scripture reading and we pray and it's uh it's really a blessing because i have to get up at like four in the morning so time i'm uh over there tying down my load i've got my handheld clipped to my belt and i get to listen to the prayer line and interact well anyway uh today that whole group was going to be over there at this little ham fest and uh i got to meet all the ones that we talked to dad and i and we went over there and had a, a nice fellowship and one of the gentlemen that uh, is in part of that group he's an attorney here in uh, tennessee and so he and i got to talking and i said uh what uh, what exactly is the process? What's the procedure, you know, the chain of command that you have to go through in order to uh, get this to the Supreme Court? Because you, you can't just have something and say, well, I'm going to take it to the Supreme Court. You've got to go through the proper channels. you got to do the state first, and you got to do the federal. And then if it collapses, then you can petition the Supreme Court to take up the case. 
but he told me that as depending on the case, depending on the severity of the case, uh, you can bypass all of these lower courts and take it directly to the Supreme Court. And in a situation like this, uh, this being emergency type situation, that yes, if if they so choose, uh, then they can immediately just take it right to the Supreme Court and bypass all the lower hanging fruit. So um, <clears throat> apparently they've taken it to the state and the state's kicked it out. Now, whether they're going to go to the next level before the Supreme Court, I don't know. But, uh, you know, if they've got all this evidence, they just may send it directly to the Supreme Court. Let me give you a little uh, history on uh, Amy Barrett that just got seated in the Supreme Court. Do you realize that in 2020 she was working on state cases in Florida over election fraud? (laughs) Yeah, man. So uh, this is nothing new. It's going to be laid down in front of her desk. Now, folks, I've been doing some uh, diligent work during that clip, and you're not going to believe what I actually found. Uh, that man on the street interview that I was talking about, they deleted. I actually found it. Check this out. One more time. So the people that were in front of me, there were two people in front of me that used the Sharpie. Yes. That was given to them by the poll workers. Yes. It did not read their ballot. Okay. And they fled it in there twice. I used the pen. Yep. Took their Sharpie and threw it away. And it read your and ballot. And it read my ballot. And it read your ballot. And it read my so ballot. So what they're doing is they're telling people to use the Sharpies. That way, yes. those votes aren't counted. Yes. That's exactly what's happening. Yes. So there was other people that were in there voting with their with their pens, and they literally went around and they were yanking pens out of their hands. Yes. They tried to do that to me, and I took their Sharpie and I hid it because then they said, look for all the Sharpies that are not being used and take the Sharpies back. They had a bowl of pens behind them that they were not giving to people and only giving Sharpies up. There we go. So the ones with the Sharpies are not being read at all? <laughs> no. No. None of those none of those ballots are being read? Of course not. So that's, and so they're doing it because they're trying to skew all of the votes in yeah, there. And they that's didn't, exactly and they what's didn't going try on. they even slide it more than one time. They immediately took it and slid it in the front, like not even tried a second time. They just that's oh, correct. Yeah. ran it through yeah, and slid it in the front. And I was like, wait a That's what they did with yours? Yep. And I just went with the Sharpie, voted Trump, and uh, she just slid it in, and that was it. But I, I. But they're not counting. They're not counting the ones with the Sharpies. And no, so they're forcing people to use the Sharpies, and those votes aren't being counted. That's what's going on. Right. And then I posted it on my Facebook group chat in my neighborhood. They said they did it at the Queen Creek Library. They did it at ASU Polytech earlier. That like four different polling places were doing Sharpies all in like between Queen Creek and like the edge of Gilbert. Yep. And and those ones are not being counted. Yeah. They're invalid. Yeah. I mean, yes. Like I have proof. <laughs> so they're invalidating votes is what they're doing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like I just, that's how I, I feel the picture. Like. Okay. And then like, there was a guy that directly came out and yelled at me. Three times. He, they both came out. Oh, no, they they called the sheriffs and said stop. that and, and told us to stop handing out the ballpoint pens, in which case those are the only ones that are actually being yeah, counted and validated. I, I used your pen and then I yeah. sent it back to you and I said, and this to somebody. Yes, works. yes. And so we know that and we've been telling them you yeah. need to use a ballpoint pen, yeah. not the Sharpie, and now those are getting invalidated. Yeah. So people are coming here to vote for Donald Trump and those votes are all getting invalidated. That's what's going on. Yeah. There we go. That's all we need. Perfect. Well, she doesn't think that's what you Welcome to the new America, people. That's what's going on. Well, that is what I- All right, folks. So this is a purposed event here. They are, they're going for the gusto. Now, to, to be this blatant, this bold, this brazen, uh, to come out right in front of everybody's eyes and try to do this, the desperation is telling me that uh, it's just uh, far beyond them trying to win an election it's like they're trying to stop something that's coming now um okay well i'm just trying to decide whether i want to talk about this or let's share it okay let me let me set the stage here for you because uh this is something you're going to have to physically see to understand it because the narration is going to get confusing so let me lay the groundwork here for you you know, when you're watching a news clip and the um, <clears throat> anchor is setting off to the side and then beside his head, he has like a little scoreboard showing you either a picture or election results or something, just a picture right beside his head. But then right below his desk on the screen, they'll have like a, 
it's not the ticker tape that runs across. It's just a solid bar showing uh, election results as well. And it gradually scrolls through state by state, right? Okay, so you've got a scoreboard beside the guy's head. And then right below on the bottom of the screen, you've got a scoreboard uh, of the individual states as they show you the results. All right. The scoreboard in what he is going to be talking about here was beside Anderson Cooper's head. And it was showing election numbers for the Democrat and for the Republican. Now, this was back during the midterms, okay? But, 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 but let me explain to you what's happening. And he's going to throw out the actual numbers, but to keep you from being confused, let's just say, let's just say that each candidate had a thousand votes, okay? So on the scoreboard beside the anchor's head, it showed each candidate had a thousand votes. At the bottom of the screen, it had each candidate, and it showed a thousand votes. When they update the scoreboard as the votes come in, those numbers changed, but the ones on the bottom of the page stayed the same, not because of nefarious reasons, but just because the scoreboard is like CNN's tally that they've been given. The emblem at the bottom of the screen is the state. So it takes a second or, you know, a couple of minutes before the state one updates. So because those two numbers, when it switched, were different, makes no difference, okay? What makes the difference is, is that the Democrat candidate got, when it updated on the scoreboard, the Democrat candidate got 500 votes. All right? So... The way it should be is if both were at a thousand and then the Democrat got 500 votes, then it should show 1,500 for the Democrat and a thousand still for the Republican, right? Well, what happened was when the scoreboard updated, it showed 1,500 for the Democrat, but it took 500 away from the Republican. So instead of the Democrat getting 1,500, and the Republican staying at a thousand, it gave the Democrat fifteen hundred and dropped the Republican down to five hundred. That's what happened here. And the gentleman that was doing this report showed scoreboard after scoreboard after scoreboard on CNN, Fox News, you name it. And this is how they were doing it. As the Democrat would get uh, say a thousand votes, they would take two hundred votes away from the Republican. And since the numbers are so big, like six hundred twenty-three million two hundred forty-two, you don't really register it when you, when you see it. It don't it don't sink in that the Republican is losing votes each time the Democrat gains votes. You follow what I'm saying? Check this out. So here we go. Watch the gold. The update's coming. Boom! There it updates, and now. Here's this guy. Now, let me show you what you missed. We're going to drag this back frame by frame. And so here we are before the update, and now I'm going to start walking you forward. Watch the gold. Here comes the update from Clarity. Boom. There it is. So now the update, Matt Bashir, uh, excuse me, Andy Bashir has 674,508 votes. And look down below, Andy Bashir had 673,948. They haven't had a chance to update the ribbon because this is in split seconds we're looking now. So Andy Bashir has just gained 560 votes. That makes sense. That's what happens as more votes come in, right? Let's look at Matt Bevan. He now has 661, 675. But look down below. He did have 662, 235. At the exact same second that Andy Bashir 
has gone up 560 votes. Matt Bevan has gone down 560 votes. This is vote switching in the computer. And by the way, between the 560 gain and 560 loss, you have just seen 25% of the loss amount of this race happen in front of your very eyes. And not only was that happening in 2018, folks, it was really happening and it has still been happening all this week and we haven't caught it. This is how blatant evil that this globalist beast rise is becoming, folks. Now, listen to what Sidney Powell said. Sidney Powell, as you know, she is General Flynn's lawyer, and um, I don't know what's going to come of General Flynn right now. Uh, she's uh, she's about ready to clear General Flynn uh, in his case. And, uh, you know, if Biden gets it, man, they're going to throw him and Roger Stone and all of them back to the wolves, man. I mean, we're all going down. Biden gets back in. They're going to they're gonna sweep all of this evidence back up under the rug. We'll never hear about it again. There'll never be another Republican in there again. This is it. If Biden, if they pull this off, I mean, you won't talk about a train headed into judgment, buddy. We're going to be blasting at lightning speed. So is it going to be held off for four more years, or are we going to hit the proverbial judgment wall? I don't know, but. Sidney Powell talked about this scoreboard flipping that we uh, identified for you here. Listen to what she had to say. We just heard from John Solomon that the FBI indeed is being diligent, is involved, and we all hope he is exactly right. Uh, your thoughts first about the, the knowledge now that uh, the Justice Department is involved in this uh, review of the election. Well, I'm delighted to hear that. I think there are any number of things they need to investigate, including the likelihood that 3% of the vote total was changed in the pre-election voting ballots that were collected digitally by using the Hammer program and a software program called Scorecard. That would have amounted to a massive change in the vote that would have gone across the country and explains a lot of what we're seeing. In addition, they ran an algorithm to calculate votes they might need to come up with for Mr. Biden in specific areas. I think that explains what happened in Michigan, where the computer glitch resulted in a change of votes of uh, about 5,500 in favor of President Trump, just in one of 47 districts. All those districts need to be checked for that same, quote, software glitch, end quote, that would change the result in Michigan dramatically. Um, the same thing is happening in other states. We've had hundreds of thousands of ballots mysteriously appear for uh, solely for Mr. Biden, which is statistically impossible as a matter of mathematics. It, it can all be documented. We are putting it into materials that we will file in federal court, and we need to seek relief in multiple states to enjoin the certification of any election results. So at least Sidney Powell, see, everybody is uh, is aware of this, okay? So the evidence is there. They have um, all right to take this to the Supreme Court. It's all there. And Sister Abby, uh, even though you relate to the pew, you did raise a uh, a good point. The judgment's going to break out either way you go, yeah. And here's why I say that. Uh, yes, yeah, Sister Jamie, uh, thank you. Uh, we have seen that. We uh, we shared that letter, I don't know, 30 minutes ago, hour ago maybe. Thank you, girl, for keeping keeping us on, uh, on top of our game. Uh, <clears throat> I, you know, I think, this is just my opinion, they know that uh, this is their last rodeo, and they've got to do all they can do to steal it. And uh, they're all in. I mean, they've got to be all in. They have no choice. I mean, they've already started all of this. They've got to see it through. And so what they have done, I want you to, I want you to realize what they've done here. 
we saw riots when Trump got elected legally. We saw how they acted with riots legally. We saw the severity and how worse the riots got during the George Floyd incident and Brianna up there in Louisville. Uh, all of the riots that broke out, the burning down of our cities, we saw how violent they increased too. We have shared with you full to gap in Germany, how the Soviets used the Bulgarians, the idiotic, untrained, chaotic Bulgarians to come into Germany and start burning down businesses and tearing down statues and terrorizing the people and shooting fireworks in the city streets to get a people accustomed to that noise. And as this went on for several months, then the Soviets began to infiltrate into the Bulgarians, their trained Soviet troops. And when their trained Soviet troops came into the city to start killing people, the citizens of that city just ignored it because they passed off the gunfire as fireworks. And that's how they were able to usher in communism into Germany via that method. So we have now witnessed some protest during the 2016 election. And then the protest of the exact same that we saw in Fold a Gap in Germany escalate into the size method that it was during all of these riots back during the summer where they were burning down businesses, busting out windows, setting fireworks off in metropolitan cities all night, every night, terrorizing the citizens, beating them, terrorizing them when they're eating in a restaurant. We saw the same tactics playing playing out. And now... Uh, we hear of groups like the NFAC, that is the trained the militarized group, carrying the AR-15s now at the tail end of these riots that were joining Antifa, saying that they are trained militarily and that they are going to burn down the system. The leader of it says we are going to burn down the system if we don't win. So let's set the stage for you. It's looking like via the courts, via legality, via the truth, that Trump is going to be able to take this to court and win it in a landslide, hands down. But before that happens, right now, before the election is even officially over, because these states have not certified their votes yet, it's still the, the, the status of this election is the same as it was Tuesday night. But yet the, the, the left, and now even Fox News, is coming out and pushing this virus that Biden has already won it. Biden's already got it. Tonight, I just saw where Biden and Kamala right now live are giving their acceptance speech. So for the rioters, they've won. They've already got it. So if this does go to court in the coming days, and our Supreme Court rules that, hey, all of these illegal ballots have to be thrown out, we have a recount, and Trump wins it in a landslide, becomes president, what degree of hail do you think is going to break loose now? Because you know what the liberal media is going to be doing? All Trump done stole another one, took your rights from you, your sovereignty. We're going to see all hell break loose like we ain't never seen before. But what do you think is going to happen if Trump puts this into the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court throws it out and says, we're not going to rule on it. Biden is the president. What type of rights you think will break out then? A house divided amongst itself cannot stand, folks. That's the word of God. My opinion, either way you want to cut it, it looks like judgment could fall upon us. Hell is about to bust through the doors.
So where is your relationship? How, how, how right is your heart with God right now? Where do you stand in your relationship? You know, Brother Jack, um, he sent us an inspirational message that they can steal the election, but they cannot steal God's sovereignty. So the question tonight that I'm going to leave you with is this. We open with Proverbs. We showed you <clears throat> the Word of God and how He executes it, His commandments, what He expects from us. If you missed it, Abby, go back and listen to it, girl. <laughs> but uh, where is our where where is where, our heart right now? I mean, how how are we going to get through this without God? And Jack's right. I mean, they may steal this election, but they're never going to steal the sovereignty of God. And I'm going to tell you something, people. I'm going to tell you this. Again, not one sparrow falls to the ground outside of the will of God. So whoever becomes our president once the dust settles is going to be placed there by the will of the Father. And we have to accept it. This is why it's time to repent. What did Joe have to say here? I can tell you this. Excuse my language, but think about it. Rock and I think it's a right for people to have bad and health care. For people to have bad and health care. Folks, we don't need to have Batacad care, okay? <laughs> we can't. We can't have Batacad care. We have to pray to the good Lord that he he save us from Batacad care for sure. I mean, I know I know I joke, and folks, this is serious. They're taking it to the courts Monday, and we don't know how long it's going to take. We know what the Bush Gore fiasco, what did it take? Thirty eight days? Took a while, and folks, I mean, this may not be something that's going to be determined by the end of the week, but but folks, they're already they're already telling the left they've won, and the longer it takes to decide the winner, the more they're going to push to the left that they have won, and the more they're going to promise to the left all the changes that they want in this nation is going to happen. They're going to get what they want. During this time, the brainwashing is going to be, see, when you throw your temper tantrums and you beat people and you scare people, you get what you want. They're going to instill and drill that into their minds, this whole entire process. And if justice does prevail and Trump is declared the winner, there is going to be a rage coming out of these people like you've never seen. We shared with you the story a few weeks ago in Acts where the same scenario somewhat happened with Paul when he came into Ephesus, when when he brought the Holy Spirit to the people and, and they became so enamored that they just jumped all over and started telling everybody. And the silversmith of that area, which, again, back in those days, that silversmith was the corporate business People in the corporate business began to leave the silversmith and join this Holy Spirit gang. I shouldn't call them gang, the, the Holy Spirit gospel. But it was taking people and money away from the large corporations back in those days, the silversmith. And he had a meeting with his top silversmith executives in Acts. <clears throat> And they called out to their god or goddess Diane, Diana, the demonic entity for, for power. And it says in so many words that the people began to riot, and these demons started coming out into these people. And the Christians there were trying to exorcise these demons in the name of Jesus, but it wasn't working this time because the demons were attacking these people and beating them to a bloody pulp. And and they were wondering why it wasn't working. And Paul says, look, man, you're, you're the power of this demonic entity that they have called upon now is not, is so strong that just by merely saying the word of Jesus is not going to save you. It's not going to exercise this demon. 
It's too powerful. You have got to have the true rooted faith in Jesus Christ in order to battle this level of demonic power, folks. This is the level we told you two weeks ago on our Halloween show that they're going to be calling up every ounce of black, dark, demonic energy that they possibly can, and it's playing out in front of our faces right now. In whichever way this goes, if they claim it trumps through the courts, this demonic entity is going to unleash. And if we are merely just churchgoers that go on a Sunday and listen to the sermon and think our soul is saved, we're not going to be able to battle or endure this demonic entity that's coming our way. We have got to have the true rooted faith in Jesus Christ. Repent. Give your life back to Jesus Christ, folks. We can learn from the past. We can learn from history. And all y'all over there in Europe, Sister Jamie and the rest of y'all over there in Italy and Ireland, prayers are with you. But y'all need to do the same because the Bible is global. The Word of God is global. It applies to you as it does to us. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Stand up against this tyranny. Cast these demons out in the name of Jesus, understanding the true faith in Jesus. That's the only way it's going to work. Judgment's coming, folks. You better get ready for it. I appreciate you joining me, and Lord willing, and the creeks don't rise. We'll be with you next weekend. Till next time, I am Old Smokehouse. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Bye-bye. Smokehouse. To talk with Smokehouse, dial 712-770-3857. That number once again is 712-770-3857. Then dial the access code 252 380, followed by the pound sign, and you will be placed in the queue. Call in and join the show. Smokehousestudios.net. God is among us. The door to the ark is slamming shut.